over the course of one week, first we dealt with the uh, the 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 badly shoddily constructed submarine that was sent down to look at the remains of the Titanic and imploded. Which sounds which sounds like a horrible way to die. Actually, it's faster until, than... Yeah. Until you consider the way they thought those people were going to die, which yeah. is so much worse. Days of their oxygen slowly running out. No, the... Right. It's like, apparently the implosion was pretty instant. It was like super high temperature and it, it happens faster than the brain can actually react to it. So I guess that was yeah. what see. Which, unlike slowly suffocating in a freezing environment. And that was the thing. We spent days speculating at how much oxygen they had left, and they couldn't find it. That right. consumed an entire week. Meanwhile, there's a boat yeah. of migrants in the Mediterranean who are actually dying. That we could say, no, 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 millions for the billionaire and the sun. But then... And I, I'm a big believer, and I know there would be people who yell at me for this, and... I, I'm a big believer that empathy is not a zero-sum game. Like, you know, I'm going to laugh at those guys because they're dead and there were people in the world that loved them. But that, like, the resources that we put into that could have saved so many other lives. At the exact same moment, yeah. Right. But then... And that does... As... as Wait, there's more! As if the week could, on Saturday, we came like this close to the fall of the Russian government. We just had, we just had a light coup for a minute. And a scattered thing. Sun later in the afternoon. That guy got bored, I guess. I... <laughs> Apparently, and try, just try to follow this without a blood vessel just snapping in your brain. A former hot dog vendor turned caterer, turned head of the of a giant mercenary corporation. Within a few hours, took several towns in in Russia on a lightning blitz toward Moscow. They were trying. They were trying to reach Kiev. They couldn't do Kiev in three days. They could do Moscow in twelve hours. Well, because a lot of the troops they were encountering were just surrendering. Yep. There's like, go on, because because morale ain't great. He was within two hundred kilometers of Moscow, and then all of a sudden, he was like, you know what? Nah. The guy from Belarus called and was like, you shouldn't do this. And I was like, you know what? I hadn't thought about it that way. But you've only shot down, what, four or five helicopters? It's no big. And we're all we're all supposed to believe now that Vladimir Putin, notoriously one of the most vindictive snipers <laughs> ever born, is just going to be like, all right, you guys can go to Belarus. It's all good. No, it's, yeah, like, we'll just call it even. Lukashenko's like, oh, you can come hang in my beach, ha- in my in my pool house. You, you can be the Cato to my OJ. So now that we've, we've covered the giant baffling shit, now we're going to go to the, we've gone for the macro, let's go on to the, the, the micro baffling shit. Yeah. Get the intro rolling. The baffling shit that we are equipped to understand it. Right. This is our lane here. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go off the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible shit, bring back there for what we like to call what the fuck's wrong. The Tara, do you remember when we were little, little little kids, there was a show with Ricardo Monteblanc. Yeah. Fantasy Isle. Both of them. Fantasy Isle. I'm doing it like fucking the count. Did they ever get that remake off the reboot off the ground? It had, it had a few up. They did the horror. Yeah. They did the horrible, horrible movie that made no sense. Yeah. But they were going to do a TV show. I, I don't think that worked out. But 
here, I, I do think there was a different sort of reboot happened in Florida. Oh, no. Yeah. Welcome to Methamphetamine Island. Oh. Florida squatters create Meth Island, complete with a four-story treehouse, a welcome center, and a trampoline. What? Boy, that that X Men have their own island storyline really took a dive, huh? <laughs> One group of Florida res residents found a, a way around skyrocketing housing prices and created their own village. Some locals refer to it as Meth Island; others simply simply deemed it a nuisance. The outpost is located on one of the islands uh, near Dunlawton Bridge in Port Orange, Florida, just south of Daytona. Uh, it's actually pretty imp impressive when you don't sleep for days. You have a lot of time to do things. Makeshift Village has its own welcome center. There's a four-story treehouse with living quarters. There's a trampoline. They even had their own Airbnb with a room for rent at $10 a night. That says quality. Uh, it's the fuck. Now, all right, just far be it for me. I, you know, I'm not going to be the, the one to narc on people. You, you don't, you don't tell people, hey, take down tents and shit like that. I get it, right? Welcome to America right now. However, y'all have kind of taken this to another level. You've got architecture involved here. But, like, was there mess? I, they had, Tara, they got a trampoline out there. I'm pretty sure there was meth involved. To an island. Sober people like trampolines. Actually, the, so apparently the city of Miami, in, later in the story, has been toying with the idea of building a bunch of tiny homes on one of the barrier islands. And like, look, I love, I love that more governments are embracing, hey, we could probably solve the homeless problem by just giving people without a home a home. Right. What I don't love about that plan is you're gonna put it right in the right. You're gonna make those islands a hurricane base. Yeah, that is true. That is. So you're you're sending all those people right before a hurricane season. Oh, we'll live in a It'll... tiny hole on a on a hurricane. Bay it's island. only a category one. That's barely a trial. It's what I'm sorry. It's category two. Ah, it's fine. I'm sorry. What they shut the Waffle House? Oh, fuck. Welcome to this. All right, what else do we have? This one, of course, is God damn. It. Every now and again, I hear that 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 phrase, uh, Disney adults, and I, I, it's it's weird to to put Disney World into that frame of reference for how adults interact with it, and in a lot of cases. The answer is badly. We got video. Bring this on over. Um, let's see, three. So, during a ride at Disney World, she uh got out the boat. Never get out of the boat, man. Never get out of the boat. She got out of the boat. Climbing off the ride and yelling at everybody else. What do you get that? There she is. Right. Screaming at the people trapped on the foot. Th that's the thing. The ride cannot move when you're up there screaming. The ride is just staying right there. You have trapped these very angry people on the ride. 
Disney World's most leisurely rides turned into a nightmarish cruise Friday night when a woman jumped out of her boat and berated trapped riders. Altercation posted on t- TikTok shows a woman pacing in an off-limits area of Epcot's Epcot's that's I don't say Epcot's Grand Fiesta Tour. Normally react relaxing boat ride theme to the three caballeros. Caballeros. I'm having trouble with my pronunciation. Because of safety concerns, the entire ride was stopped, trapping boats filled with adults and kids next to the shouting woman. Fast member operating the ride attempted to get the woman to calm down. The woman continued to point and yell at people in the boat. Like the video eventually shows the woman climbing over the ropes to leave to an employee only area. Uh, they could not identify the, uh, could not confirm the identity of the woman. The spokesperson did tell San Francisco Gate that deputy responded to, quote, two separate disturbances involving the same 37-year-old woman. Uh, the first occurred at Mexico P- uh, Pavilion. Um, the second occurred about an hour later in the line for Guardians of the Galaxy. Deputies believe the woman was intoxicated. And one of the things about Epcot they mentioned in the article is Epcot is one of the only places where you can take a traveler if you're in Disney. The rest of the places, if you want a drink, you have to sit down at the restaurant, have a drink. Epcot yeah. has all 11 pavilions from around the world. And of course, people try to drink their way around the world. Which is a terrible idea. Like When I was... When I was younger, I remember they had Pleasure Island in Florida. Yeah. And they kept all the shit in one place. Right? It was all the adult. There were the, the dance clubs and, and the drinks. It was all in one place after dark so that the drunkies were not bothering everybody the fuck else. And then they got rid of it. like... I don't really understand the concept. If you want to, like, drink and party, why are you going to Disney? Why are you going to Disney World? Like, I don't want to party with Donald Duck. (laughs) (laughs) Donald's a mean drunk, man. And he doesn't wear pants. (laughs) Like I don't want to, I don't want to get shit hammered out of my mind, and then try to figure out why Pluto the dog is a pet who can't speak, but Goofy the dog walks on four legs and wears clothes. Two legs, two legs. Right. <laughs> what did I say? Four legs. Or two. Yeah. yeah. Like I don't want to try and confront that while I'm fucked up. You know, you don't want to have the deep questions while you're no while you're screwed up on four little and I don't I don't want to party with Minnie Mouse like it's those things don't go together in my brain it's just it's so I don't I don't get it and trapping people on the ride they're gonna love you for that. What were you even trying to tell them? I can't understand what she's screaming in the video, but she's just like yelling her ass off at them. Like, what? Okay. Why was that a good idea? I'm real sorry they're at a dole whip, lady. (laughs) It's going to be all right. They'll have more tomorrow. So uh, the next one is another one of those. uh, Yeah. Um. Just because it worked in a movie doesn't mean it's going to work in the real world. Remember Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Remember the valet drivers? Yeah. BMW taken for a high-speed joyride by Bristol Airport parking valet. It was caught out by the owner after not realizing the dash cam was switched on. Bristol Air Force confirmed action was taken after a car park valet was caught red-handed taking a joyride behind the wheel of a top-end BMW. It appeared the valet forgot to turn, off, turn the dash cam off when he took the car for a very fast spin around the Silver Zone car park. 
Akbar was outraged when he saw what had been going on while he was away in Greece. He shared the dash cam footage on social media, asking users to find his name. The footage shows a car park valet approaching the high-end vehicle. Dash cam records an unauthorized driver revs the powerful engine and heads around the car park at speed, putting a straight section where the car is accelerated. The fuck are you... Okay, though, but here's... We've become too dependent on the fucking internet, man. Mm, true. Because this guy... You, you see this? You have the footage. You could call the valet service and be like, hey, I have this video of one of your employees fucking with my car. And instead you're like, let me put this on YouTube and see what people can do. Why? If, you know where he parked? They have well, a phone number? I figure he was probably a little pissed. Yeah, but like, you're not solving your problem in the most efficient way. You just want the internet to yell at somebody. Yes. That doesn't solve your problem. Yeah, but that doesn't solve your problem. Well, it's cathartic. I guess. Because how... Like, I, I, I put up on, like, Facebook one day. Like, I just put it on my personal Facebook page, walked down to my friends. Like, an Amazon driver just, like, flung a package at my door. And people were like, oh, you should post that. You should. And I'm like, look, I'm not trying to fuck up anybody's life. There wasn't anything fragile in the package. I just kind of want to be like, dude, what the fuck? With my friends. I'm not trying to ruin lives. I don't need to do that. I. How can you in, be here in 2023 with the rest of us and not understand the cameras are everywhere? Especially at an yeah. airport car park. Yeah. Somebody is going to say that shit. I don't know that it would occur to me that, like, it doesn't usually occur to me that every car has a dash cam now. Yeah. Because, like, mine doesn't. I would still, I, like, I don't know that that would occur to me. Yeah, but I would still know that someone would be watching me out there in the fucking parking lot. Right. Or it's your job. Like, there's going to be footage of a car moving around that shouldn't be. It's your damn job. Like, yeah. they also did this the first few minutes of Shang Chi. Yes, that do not, do oh. not, yeah, Shang, yeah, do not uh, do what you see in the movies. It does not work out well for you. No, like, what are you twelve? Like, are you the kid who tried to jump off the roof with an umbrella? Is that you? The fuck? To add insult to injury, Mr. Butler later posted on an auto Facebook group that someone had written, nice car in the collected dust across the driver's side door. <laughs> he asked for help in removing the message. Well, if it's just written in the dust, wash your car. I think it was because he was still in Greece. Like, just... Man. And next, uh, we're, we're re entering the oh, you son of a fucking bitch uh, uh, part of the evening tonight. Oh my god. You're going to hell. You're you're not 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 just the fast way. You're going to hell the fast way. If there's an express lane, boom. firefighter steals credit cards from dead man, then go shopping. A firefighter responded to a nine one one call involving a man who died in his New York City apartment and stole his credit cards. Silas McKenzie, 33, of the Bronx, went shopping with the man's American Express and MasterCard for two hours the next morning. New York City Fire Department uh, firefighter tried charging uh, $1,100 worth of items to the cards. Stores in the Bronx, including Target, made a visit to buy Apple AirPods. 
McKenzie was indicted on two counts of fourth degree grand larceny, second degree attempted identity theft, third degree identity theft, and second degree criminal, criminal impersonation and official misconduct. Uh, the firefighters. Did you think no one, did you think no one was going to notice the cards were used after the guy died? Like, of all the people, like, well, I couldn't imagine who could have gotten them except, you know, any of the dozens of people who had to service the guy after he died. The narrow, I actually, I worked with a guy at Old Navy who he and his girlfriend had a scam. She worked at the local hospital. And while people were in surgery, she would go through their clothes and write down their credit card numbers. And then they would go shopping on the cards. And the the way that they got caught, he did he did a bunch of shopping at the store on one of these stolen cards and used his employee discount. <laughs> and they came in, walked him out of the store in cuffs, and I would the thing that kills me to this day, the thing that really fucking bakes my noodle. It's stolen money. Why do you need your employee discount? <laughs> like, were you getting, like, loyalty points or some shit? Like, wh why? It's not your money. And that's how he got caught. And to, to this day, that fucks me up. That, like, why did, why did you need to use your discount? Buddy, that's fucking low, though. Yeah. She's like... All right. After my father passed, and I had to deal with all the finances and stuff, like, that was a lot to deal with immediately. A fucking lot. The idea I would have to have suddenly, oh, here's credit card fraud on top of it, and you're responsible yeah. for that shit as part of the estate. Someone asked me, like, the next day... After Dan passed, like, well, you have his wallet, right? And, like, that hadn't even fucking occurred to me. I was like, do I have his wallet? I'm like, luckily I had. He had, like, we came home and he took it out of his pocket and everything. But I'm like, what the fuck was he wearing? Like, did he still have his jeans on with the wallet in the pocket? Like, cause that that's his ID. That's everything. And luckily I had it. But, like... Those things don't occur to you in a fucking emergency situation. And he was a firefighter. Much more together person than me. Like, and yeah, you kind of expect that these people aren't pieces of shit. Like your dad would have beat the shit out of this guy. Yeah, you would. It's like, fuck, you lit the dog on fire. God only knows what to do to this dude. Uh, he didn't. He didn't mean the life of dog on fire. He was just trying to be yeah. a jack out of his butt. But wait! There's even... But you make it sound like he did that on purpose, and I don't want to be thinking. <laughs> he didn't. He was just trying to draw out a tick, and <laughs> the dog moved real fast, and it was an accident, and the dog was fine. <laughs> So I don't want oh. people that are new to the show thinking that I was the daughter of some animal torturer. No. Uh, well, to me, this one, arguably way worse, because this, this wasn't just a spur of the moment bullshit thing. This was fucking, I think this actually was a sin. This is quite literally, I think you have committed a fucking offense before the Lord. Workplace sins U.S. restaurant used fake priests in shameless wage theft scheme. Northern California restaurant chain will have to pay more than $140,000 in back pay after a shameless wage theft, wage theft scheme that involved a fake priest who had workers confess to any sins they committed while on the clock. The owners and operators of Takia uh, Garibaldi, Takiri, Gar Takiria Garibaldi, a Sacramento-based restaurant chain, used a threat workers fabricating timesheets, part of an effort to instruct an investigation into the business. Um, workers were 
prohibited from using their usual digital attendance tracker, or instead told her right down that they were working 40-hour weeks. In what a uh, labor department described as among the most shameless efforts to intimidate workers that investigators have seen, the owners of uh, Garibaldi also brought in a fake priest to conduct confession sessions with employees. Once employees sat with the priest, they were peppered with work-specific questions and asked whether they had any ill feelings toward their employer and had spoken negatively about them to anyone including investigators. Let's wait now. The restaurant offered a supposed priest to hear their workplace sins while their employees reported the manager falsely claimed that immigration issues would be raised by the department's investigation. Jesus fucking Christ. Like, I was raised Catholic as fuck, and still, if I was at any job... And they walked in a priest? Uh-huh. Uh, immediately, no. No. You... Unless I worked at a church. Because if you work in a church, you expect that shit, right? I... Like, if I was working at the Old Navy, and they were like, hey, everybody, here's Father O'Malley. You're all going to do confession. Even my then still practicing Catholic ass would have been like, the fuck I am. Like, I, I don't know what level of sin. I know it's not mortal. What is it, venal or some shit? But this, I'm pretty sure impersonating a priest, God's not cool with that. Right? Well, it's... I don't know if there's anything specific about that. I mean, it, nobody's going to tell you it's great. <laughs> the problem here, the real problem that you're going to run into, according to Christian Dogma, is fucking over, like, I don't want to say the poor, because I don't know anybody's financial, but, like, working little people and the fraud. I, I don't think they're going to quibble over the collar. So much as how how much you were trying to fuck people over. Could you just imagine the guys in the labor department like they brought in a what? They they did yeah. they did what? I'm sorry. Like, honestly, even if so even if it was a real priest, the labor department's like That's still shady as fuck. They 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 can't they can't do that. Like, goddamn. How does it get in anyone's head that this is going to be a good plan? You're kicking right off with sacrilege. That's the yeah. starting. That's well, not the end game. That's where Mike, we're beginning Mike, from. Mike makes a good point. Confession is considered an actual sacrament, at least in the Catholic Church. So any practicing Catholics that sat with that fake priest have to now confess to their real priest that they committed a false sacrament. They are now technically in bad standing. <laughs> Imagine your ass going to hell for that. Oh, I'm sorry. This guy over here, he pretended to be a priest. You bought it, so you fucked. Have a nice day. Don't the Allegheny's over there like... <laughs> Just, 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 I just the plan to go into somebody's head to go. How do we deal with this? Does anybody have a priest outfit? And everybody in the room is like, "You're a fucking genius, man." And why would you not just bring in a fake Department of Labor person, right? Just have some asshole put on a short sleeve shirt and a tie. Way more plausible. Like, bring some complaints. It, it, yeah, it's way more plausible and less weird. Because bringing in a priest yeah. is just like, are we doing an exorcism? What the fuck is going on here? Like, that alone is going to be complaints. Even if you bring in a real priest, yeah. that's not okay. Okay. Speaking of other not okay, we're going to finish out in Florida. We have just 
classic shenanigans for our show here. Uh... <laughs> Nearly naked Florida man arrested after multiple hit and run crashes. That is that is a bury in the lead there. A Florida man wearing only socks and a small covering wrapped around his waist arrested Wednesday after multiple hit and run crashes. Flagler County Sheriff's Office said a an SUV was speeding on Old Kings Road when it struck multiple cars and continued down the road. A Florida Fish and Wildlife officer tried to pull over the driver and identified as 22-year-old Stephen Peterson. He did not stop the car. SUV then drove onto Old King's Elementary School property, drove around the running track before getting back onto Old King's Road. Deputies went up to the car, told Peter his pastor to get out of the vehicle multiple times. Peterson faces multiple charges, including fleeing and eluding, leaving the scene of a crash. Hit multiple cars. Just that's a wonderful outing. <laughs> I'm gonna take my dick to the old king's road. And I'm gonna drive till I can't no more. <laughs> That's how it goes on the demo. Uh, I know not a lot of people know that. Uh, Possession of drug paraphernalia. You don't say. I'm gonna guess. Can we all guess which one? Because it says marijuana. I'm just saying, that's what the article says. I have never seen somebody, well, unless they were going very slowly, I have never seen someone smoke <laughs> pot and crash into a bunch of cars. That I could understand. If, if, if you were if, if you were stoned out of your mind, you like banged into like a street full of cars, I, you did it like two miles an hour, that would make sense. That would make absolute yeah. perfect sense. High speed, on the other hand, with no pants. Yeah. What the hell are you wearing there, dude? It, it, it's a very pretty scarf. It looks, it sounds like a Hawaiian shirt he's got wrapped around his testes. What the fuck? Ki kinda, yeah. That's not how you wear that. What happened oh. to your pants, son? He looks, he looks like Florida Jesus. <laughs> How many cars? It was like a no. How many fucking cars was? Uh, struck multiple cars and continued down the road, just banging into folks. And deputies. It's another beautiful day in sunny Florida, America's way. God. Why aren't there fire? It's not till next week. Fireworks? Yeah, there's fireworks already. There's some here too. Freedom! It's too early. It's never too early for freedom. I just... And I like, I'm yelling at my window like they can hear me. They can't. The window doesn't even open. Like, <laughs> honey, where, where did your pants go? That's already a bad start to the day. Yeah. Unless you're Donald Duck at Pleasure Island. Back around. Oh. I'm I'm gonna call bullshit on marijuana. I'm I'm really gonna call I'm I'm pretty sure this was something else entirely. Yeah, that's just you know maybe they only found the marijuana. The rest of it was all Yeah. I would explain it. Oh just all right, so what are we what do we start? I guess what the fuck is what? We learn it. Look, if you're starting off the day without your pants, it's all downhill from there. I mean, to be fair, a lot of us probably start the day without any pants. Well, there's waking up. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I sleep in just a t-shirt. Yeah, there's waking but up. You, you, you don't want to make it the house that way. Yeah, it's it's. 
You shouldn't be greeting the neighbors in all your glory. No. You shouldn't be driving anywhere until you get the pants. We learned if you're going to commit wage theft, just stick to the wage theft. Don't bring God into this shit. He doesn't like that. He's got other shit to do. Trust me, he's busy right now. I mean, to be fair, he's good at it because all of his people do have to take a vow of poverty, except for the one at the top. He, he doesn't pay. He doesn't pay great either. But still, we have learned that there's a few things lower than stealing from the dead. But maybe stealing from the dead to buy AirPods. Frank's just an air fucking AirPods. Uh, we have learned there's cameras everywhere. Behave yourself. Yeah. That if you are drunk and belligerent in the middle of fucking Disney World, something has gone amiss in your life. There's no way to go through life. You, you've taken a wrong turf. And finally, we've learned that uh, when your attempt to get around our system involves architecture and trampolines, maybe you've gone just a wee hair touch too far. At the very least, you so, somebody... You should try and somebody should own the land. Oh, Craze Spruce. Perfect. Vince Gilligan's Island. 